Let's talk about the ever-present topic of the blacklist. What are they, how do they affect you, and how can you avoid them? Let's dive right into it. Blacklists are meant to make the internet a spam-free place, keeping your and everyone else's inbox clean. They are supposed to prevent any malware or phishing from reaching you. Their goal is to help the providers in filtering out bad emails for the benefit of the good emails. Finally, they are the guardians of good sender practices and can be a good warning if you walk astray from such practices. They are a reminder that we should all send safe and fair content and that there is no place for spammers or scammers. There are a few types of different blacklists based on what exactly is being blacklisted. IP blacklist focus on IPs with lower reputation or bad sending practices. If you use a major provider like Google or Outlook, you might be using a shared IP. This means that since it is not your IP directly, you should be able to disregard if blacklisted. It can also change automatically over time. If you use a dedicated IP pool, on the other hand, then this might be something to look into. Domain blacklists are more serious as they directly target your domain. It is best to check the delisting possibilities as soon as possible. Some blacklists might also delist you automatically after some time, but only if you stop the behavior which led to blacklisting in the first place. Email content can also be blacklisted. This is usually done by certain collaborative filter networks, not really blacklists per se, but it can still affect your results. They can store characteristics of messages that are spam or indicate spam emails. And beware here, this often goes beyond simple spam word matching. It can rely on full phrases or even the tone itself. Now, why do you land on a blacklist? What practices attract the attention of blacklists? First and foremost, being marked as spam. General recommendation is to stay below 0.1% of spam rate. Effectively, this means that out of 1000 emails you send, only one can be marked as spam. Consistently going over 0.3%, right off the bat you're risking being blacklisted. Secondly, sending to spam traps. Spam traps are used to track down spammers. They can be email addresses specifically created for this purpose or some old email addresses that are no longer used. Always make sure to target a high quality prospect list to avoid reaching out to such spam traps. Thirdly, avoid sending spikes. If you send 20 emails in one day and on the very next day you send 300 emails, you definitely attract the attention of your provider and spam filters. This is simply dangerous. Such a pattern is generally viewed as a potentially compromised or hacked account, so you can imagine the consequences yourself. Besides those three, pay attention to high bounce rate, low open rates, or low reputation, as all of these can contribute to, or be a result of, landing on a blacklist. What happens once you land there? It's simple, your results go down, your bounce rate skyrockets, you're burning your reputation, burning the domain, etc. Basically, a dead end. How to check if you're blacklisted? There are a couple of tools which can help you with that. We stick to the mighty MX toolbox and search for any red marks, which indicate that our IP or domain is blacklisted. There's also multi-RBL, which performs a complete IP checkup for your sending servers. Feel free to use those tools once in a while or if you notice any deliverability issues. How to understand the blacklists. The thing is, not every single blacklist affects your outreach. There are some that do in a major way and you should focus on them. Remember the types of blacklists? Let's start with those that blacklist the domain. Such blacklists are Spamhouse, one of the major good sending guardians out there. You can check their site directly and if listed, request uh, the listing. SURBL is another one you might want to pay attention to. Again, check their site and request uh, the listing. The third one I look for is Involument, perform a bulk lookup on their site and if needed, check the delisting possibilities. Keep in mind that the listing is one thing, but fixing and improving your sending practices is another. The list yourself, but take a closer look at what might have caused the situation in the first place. Our recent video can help you with that, as we created a list of things to check if you want to spot any deliverability issues in the blink of an eye. Check it right here. Now let's jump to IP blacklists. These are important if you have a dedicated IP. If you use a shared IP from your provider, you can ignore them. Spamcop and Barracuda are major players here. They closely monitor the send out from your IP, also with the use of spam traps. You can find out if you are listed directly on their site and similarly request uh, the listing. But hey, I mentioned that not all the blacklists affect your outreach. How come? Well, there are some blacklists which are not considered a serious one by major providers. And eventually that's what matters, right? Usually any blacklist that requires you to pay to be delisted 
is not a reliable blacklist. After all, what guarantee do you have that after the payment, you will not be listed once again shortly after? Besides that, some minor blacklists might simply not be known enough to have any impact on your reputation or outreach. So to wrap it up, blacklists are our friends as they try to lower the number of spam in the world. However, if you do not follow the best practices, you can also be negatively affected by them. There are different types of blacklists and different ways of delisting, but the best defense is to not be listed in the first place. Stick to the best deliverability recommendations like keep your bounce rate below 2%, send like a human, not a robot, use a high quality prospect list, always run a personalized and relevant outreach, Verify your prospect list to avoid spam traps. And in the end, always ask yourself one question. Would I myself want to get and read that email? For more deliverability tips, hit that subscribe button and check our channel for more useful videos. See you in the next one.